Welcome to the CalPAS Student Information Data Population Training. In this training, we will explain the data population requirements for student information, as well as student address. We will also provide some important reminders for you. Today's training was created to introduce the student information, SINF, data population, and submission. At a minimum, you should have attended the CalPAS Overview and CalPAS Basics trainings to have become familiar with CalPAS system, as well as the navigation around the CalPAS system. Please keep in mind that if you have not attended these trainings, you may not understand some terms and references used during this training. So let's take a look at the objectives for this training. At the end of this session, with the CalPAS Student Information Data Population described, LEA should be able to identify the student demographics, data requirements for student profile in CalPATS. You should also be able to demonstrate the submission process through online maintenance and batch upload. And lastly, resolve submission validation errors and warnings with ease by consulting the error list and the file specifications documents. So here's the agenda for the training. We will discuss the following. We will start with an overview of the submission and then we will discuss the details of the business rules related to student information. Spend some time on how data is reported in CalPAS, discuss some common submission error validations, and lastly, wrap up the session with some important reminders and references. First, we will start with some general information related to student demographics and then introduce key concepts related to the data collected. So why do LEAs need to report student information? There are several reasons for reporting this information. First, LEAs are expected to submit student information records to CalPAS in compliance with state and federal reporting requirements. Secondly, student information is used to submit student demographics and address information, which is the foundation of the student profile in CalPATS. Please keep in mind that it is important that the student information data is reported and updated throughout the academic year, as it is used for various submissions throughout the year in CalPATS. So here are the different components of the Student Profile Foundation in CalPATS. We have the SCNR, the Student Enrollment, SPRG, Student Program, SELA, Student English Language Acquisition, and SPED and SSRV, which are related to students with disabilities. We will discuss these components in our other trainings. Our focus today will be on the SINF. This information can be extracted in a file from your local student information system and uploaded into CalPATS, or it can be added or updated in CalPATS online maintenance. To successfully report your student data in CalPATS, LEAs need proper user account roles assigned. At a minimum, you would need these roles to process student information in CalPATS. So, for data population, you would need the student search, SCNR edit and view, as well as SINF edit and view roles. To view the content of your student information data on reports, at a minimum, you would need the fall one reports role. On the right side of this slide, you will see a list of CalPAS documents. The user manual provides more information about the functionality of CalPAS, as well as links to other important references and resources related to CalPAS. The CalPAS code says document provide more information about the definition of the code values that can be reported for different fields in a record. The file specification form and document provide more information on a record layout, as well as different file types and the different fields within a record and the definition and validations related to those fields. The error list document provides more information about different validation as well as certification errors and warnings. It also provides some resolution tips to help you resolve the errors. 
The data guide document is another important reference documentation that provides the detailed business rules for the different data categories that you would be submitting to CalPAS for different submissions. And last but not least, the valid code combinations document provides valid code combinations that can be submitted for specific records and file types. In this reporting matrix, on the left side, you will see a list of school types and whether they're required to submit the SINF file. On the right of that, you will see the SINF requirements for different grade levels. Please take a moment and pause and use the legend on the right side of the slide to become familiar with what school types and grade levels the SINF is required for. So now let's discuss the data requirements and business rules in SINF reporting. So there are a few different subsets of data that you will be submitting for student information. This includes the student name and some general demographics data that will be pre-populated from the SSID enrollment information in the initial student demographics record. The rest of the student demographics, such as ethnicity and race, as well as parent and guardian, highest level of education and address must be populated for all students as part of their student profile. On this slide, you will see several important fields in the student demographic record that must be populated under different circumstances. On the left side, the record effective start date is really important and every student demographic records must have this date populated. The record effective start date is pre-populated when an SSID request is initially done. If a new record is added to an existing SSID, date should be equal to or after the enrollment start date. So a note here on student name. Initially, when the SSID request is done, the name is pre-populated in the demographic records. However, whenever there is a name change for a student, please utilize the alias name fields to preserve the historical data related to names. So use them to preserve the previous names for the student. Enrolled in a U.S. school less than three cumulative years indicator. This is required when a student is not born in the U.S. or Puerto Rico. And this information is needed for the Title III eligible immigrant collection. So if you have a student that is foreign born or if you know that the student is an English learner, you need to populate the student initial U.S. school enrollment date. If you do not know the student's EL status at this time, you can always update this field at a later time. Last but not least, the birth state, province, and city. So for US, Canada, and Mexico, the state province code is required and must be populated. Other countries do not require the state province code. It is always a good idea to populate as many of these fields as possible if you have that information. The race and ethnicity as well as the parent guardian highest education level fields are required. Initially they are blank when the SSID is requested. However, as you update the student information records, you should pay attention to these data elements. The race and ethnicity information is required for every student and if it is missing, at the end, when you're reviewing your certification reports, you will see aggregate certification fatal errors related to this. In other words, you will not be able to certify your submissions if the race and ethnicity information is missing even for one student. The parent guardian highest education level is also required for fall one and must be populated so Please pay attention to these two categories of data. There are several fields or data elements related to these two categories of data under student information and all or most of them should be populated depending on the different options that are available for you. 
So in addition to student information, you would also be submitting student address. LEAs are advised to submit student's mailing address when possible. The student's residential address can be submitted if a separate mailing address does not exist. Just a note here that PO box addresses are accepted by CalPADS and there is an FAQ with more information related to the student mailing address. So please visit that URL on the slide.